All right, in this video, I'm going to break down how to properly reconstitute your peptides. And I'm going to explain this in the most simple way possible as a resource for myself, because the number of times I've had to try to explain this and people don't get it, it's actually starting to bother me. So the very first thing that you have to understand about mixing peptides is there are two very important conversions that you have to understand. The first is understanding that most insulin needles have one milliliter. You'll notice that on that insulin needle, there's also marks for 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. And if you look really closely on one side, it'll say ML slash CC one milliliter. And then on the other side, it will say 100 units. What that's telling you is that 100 units equals one milliliter. This is a measurement of volume. This is a larger syringe with needle that we're gonna to use to mix our water. And you'll notice on this, it's actually just measured in milliliters. The reason we measure in units with an insulin syringe versus in milliliters with the larger size syringes is because units is a smaller measurement, which means that we can be more accurate with how we dose. That's the only difference. Bigger syringe, less accurate. Small syringe, more accurate. There are also even smaller insulin syringes. You can get half a milliliter syringes and you can get one third milliliter syringes. Okay. So when you get your BAC water, you'll know that this is 10 milliliters or 1,000 units. It's just a measurement of volume. This is your peptide. In this case, I have 20 milligrams of retitrutide. You'll notice inside it's a powder. This is freeze-dried or lyophilized powder. In order for us to use this 20 milligram vial of retitrutide, we have to reconstitute it using BAC water. And when we do this, it's going to make a solution. But before we move into that, the second conversion that you have to understand is milligrams and micrograms. Some peptides are dosed in micrograms, some dosed in milligrams. You have to know both, but it's pretty easy because it's just a metric system. There are 1000 micrograms in one milligram. So this 20 milligram vial of retitrutide is the same as saying this is a 20,000 microgram vial of retitrutide. Cool. Now, just so you understand the terminology that we use here, when these are combined together, this is a solution. And depending upon how much water I place inside here is gonna determine the concentration of that solution. The concentration of that solution is going to determine how many units I need to draw in order to get to the dosage I'm trying to accomplish. So as an example, if I was to take one milliliter of water and put it into this 20 milligram vial of retitrutide, I would know that inside of the one milliliter of water, there's 20 milligrams, but I only need two of those for my shot. Therefore, if you do your simple arithmetic, that's one tenth of this. Got it? Okay. <clears throat> So if I look at my handy dandy insulin syringe, I know that I put one milliliter in here. I only need one tenth, therefore it's 10 units. It's that simple. That's how we determine our dosage. But if we use a small amount of water, that means it's more concentrated. And the more concentrated a peptide is, sometimes it can cause irritation at the injection site and the other consideration is the more concentrated it is, the more precise you have to be with how much you draw. Because the difference between one unit of error becomes much more if my concentration is higher versus if I was to add more water there, I'd have a little bit more leeway, knowing that I'm not gonna be perfect every time I dose. That's why typically best practice, you'll see people put two milliliters of water instead of one into these small vials so that it helps with the injection site irritation, as well as the, we'll say, inaccuracies in human measurement. So in that case, if I was to take two milliliters of water and put it into this vial, then what would happen is it would change my solution. Now, 
there's 10 milligrams of retitrutide for every one milliliter in this vial. So in order for me to get that same two milligram dose, I'd also have to draw twice as much water. So instead of 10 units, it's 20 units. Okay, I'm gonna use another example with this five milligram vial of tessamorelin. In this case, the daily dose for tessamorelin is usually one or two milligrams per day. To simplify this, we're just gonna use one milligram because the math is easier. So again, if I was to take one milliliter of water, put it inside of this five milligram vial of tessamorelin, what would happen is, is I would know for every one milliliter, there's five milligrams. So if I take 100 units, I divide it by five because our dose is one milliliter, that means I would draw 20 units. That 20 units would equal one milligram. But again, best practice, two milliliters, so it's not so concentrated. Therefore, there's two and a half milligrams for every milliliter, in which case I would need to draw 40 units to get that one milligram dose. So that's the basic math behind how you reconstitute peptides. Now, if you have something like human growth hormone and it's measured in IUs instead of milligrams, the math is the same. So we have a 24 IU vial of HGH. If I took one milliliter and put it inside, I would know for every one milliliter, there's 24 IUs. So a half a milliliter would be 12, half of that 0.25 would be six. You can see where we're going from here. If I took two milliliters and I put it into this 24 IU vial of HGH, now for every one milliliter, there's 12 IUs. For every 100 units, there's 12 IUs. I wanna take two IUs, I just divide that by six. So what's 100 divided by six? Let me pull out my handy dandy calculator. 16.6 units. So if I want two IUs of growth, two milliliters goes here, and I draw 16.6 units, we'll just call it 17 to make it easy, I know that I'm gonna have about two IUs. So when you tell somebody that your dose is measured in units, you're not saying anything because we have no idea what the concentration of that solution is. We need to know how many milligrams of peptide compound were in the vial and how much water you put in. Then from that, we can calculate how much you need to draw to accomplish the dose that you're trying to accomplish. This is how peptide reconstitution works. Please, for the love of God, save this video. Share it with your friends. Post it on social media. Because this concept is something that I have to explain to people ad nauseum. And so I'm sorry if I sounded condescending. <laughs> and I'm sorry if I sounded like I was being a dick. But it's, again, it's, a, it's exhausting explaining this concept. Okay. Last thing, I provide all of the knowledge that you need in order to be successful with peptides, research, sourcing, nutrition, training, fitness, coaching, to get you to your health goals. And I provide all that information for absolutely free inside of my community on school. If you wanna join, just tap the link in the description, sign up for a free account, jump in there, and you can ask me all the questions you need so that you can get the help and the support that you want. I really hope this video was valuable for you. Have a wonderful day and good luck with your rat.